Um, about the upgrade price. So there's a the question is, um, what is the upgrade price for a previous version of Deadline coming to this? There's a couple different things that could apply here. Um, if you're currently on subscription or in support, which is a standard annual maintenance contract, very similar to the way Autodesk does it, it's free. So there's no upgrade charge even for major upgrades. If you're off or you're coming up to a renewal, it's $45 to renew for the next year. But if it's uh, something where you've been off renewal for quite some time, say uh, more than three months or more, then there's an upgrade charge of $75 per node. So it would be $45 per license per node that you would like to renew for a standard subscription or $75 per node if you've been off it. Um, so if you've been off of it for say a year or two years and you're running deadline four or five and you pay the upgrade price, you actually get another year of support from the purchase date and then you can be covered on any updates from that point on and you're your current and you get deadline six. Okay, let's see here. With the MongoDB change, change is there mm -hmm. a means to port stats from Postgres SQL into MongoDB? Is there a way to We actually have an even Yeah, I can I can definitely talk about how we handle stats now. There's an even better way of handling it. So what we did in the past is a lot of people wanted us to push those statistics into Postgres. Um, we had initially had a connector to Postgres that would automatically inject it in, and the problem with that was that you needed to follow our schema. So what we did this time around is we have API calls, API hooks for when a job completes. And so what you can do is you can create a Python script that gets all the statistics you need, how long a task took, how long the job took, what slaves rendered them, and you can inject them into whatever da database solution you want. And that allows, like I say, far better flexibility, and uh, it, it's a lot more powerful. Another one is, um, I've noticed with Deadline 5, nodes access assets directly from the production server rather than copying all assets, textures, XREFs, uh, mm -hmm. to the repository to lighten the load. With EC2 integration, our jobs now segregated from the production server for rendering? Well, I guess I should uh, explain that a little bit. Uh, it depends on how your, how your submission went through. So we can work it two ways, especially with 3D Studio Max. Um, we can either have, um, we can either access the scene directly from where it is on the network, or we can access it um, from a copied location, like say the repository or a custom location. Um, with EC2, what should be done um, is, yes, segregate both farms. The only reason for that is um, the latency and the, the throughput of uh, the internet is still not quite there. So what you would do is have, you would upload the, the assets you need, like I say, with the archive. If you're using 3D Studio Max, submit all of your assets, archive it into a zip file, push it up, and, and deploy it up there. Uh, so that if, say, a wayward job tries to access a local asset, uh, it doesn't uh, bog down your entire internet connection. So having the segregation there allows you to uh, to handle that a lot better. Cool. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Um, 